was 18 when I joined and you didn't think about dying because we were all uh, uh, we were bulletproof. I guess I had, with our 30 years in the Army, 25 years of that was commanding soldiers. And there's no greater honour to, to me or an Australian, I believe, than commanding Australian soldiers in both peace and war. And we were a disaster, absolute disaster. So they decided they would send the 1st Battalion to Vietnam in 1965, uh, and we didn't go to Vietnam then. And uh, they went off. Uh, we then got our heads together and we went to Malaya instead. And we eventually finished up at a place called Gumbang, so that when we pulled out, we blew it up. And there was just a big explosion on the side of the hill. By the time we hit Vietnam, we'd been together for five years. No other battalion's ever done that. One day we were we were patrolling in Phuc Thuy and uh, we got ambushed. One of our, my front platoon, 10th platoon, got ambushed. And two lads were killed on the spot, young uh, Brewer and Ramsey. And uh, she all hell broke loose for a while. Uh, yeah, it was a bad day. I suppose you remember the good things, but you remember the occasional bad ones. And another time, not too long after that, we had a contact in a, what they call a bunker system, where the enemy were, and the three platoons were in contact. And after half a minute, I said, four, one, four, two, four, three, stop firing, because they're shooting at each other. And no one got hit. And I could not believe it. I mean, we were together for six years, and that was unheard of. Uh, in my case, for my 30 years in the Army, 25 in commanding assault, was always also unheard of. Uh, I was just very, very lucky. And if I hadn't been commanding assault, I probably wouldn't have stuck around, because that's all I wanted to do. I think you've got to be very loyal to your people, and you've got to look after them. It can be hard, but if you look after your soldiers and look after them, they'll do anything for you. You do a lot of things to soldiers, but if their morale goes down, then you've got a problem. We didn't question why we were there, quite frankly. We probably questioned it afterwards a bit, but we didn't question why we were there in the first stage. To the young soldiers, it was probably a bit of excitement. It was an adventure until people started to get wounded and killed. And then it was no longer an adventure, then it was she was dangerous work. The reason it was an unpopular war, and I've always said, well, which was the popular one? I haven't found that either yet. Was because of conscripts. Conscription, that's what turned the country against the war and against the soldiers, I think. And I got all my fellows aside and said, anyone who doesn't want to go, come and see me. And they all accepted the fact they were going. And it was also the first time that we'd had a war that that night you saw on television actually what had happened that day. And that was probably very, very hard. The families wouldn't even watch the television, a lot of them, because they didn't know what they were going to see. We came home to Brisbane on the ship, and we marched through Brisbane to a tremendous uh, uh, reception by the people. We weren't like some of the fellows who came home on a plane, hopped off and had to get out of their uniform, and then s sort of sneak out of the airport and got abused as uh, child killers and things like this. I didn't have any of that, and in fact, until I took over as the CEO of the RSL, I wasn't aware that a number of RSLs had said to these fellows, no, you're not welcome, because you, that wasn't a real war. Don't ever blame the soldiers. They just do what they're told to do, and they do it very bravely most times. And uh, we are very lucky in this country to have a, have a succession of, of, of people who have been that good and continue to be so. You would do everything you can to save a fellow's life. If they're so badly wounded they're going to die, you'd just stay with them. But you would never put someone out of his misery. No, 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 that wouldn't even come into, into here. But there were cases, I mean, the, the fellows who came home, uh, and there's a very good friend of mine who was a major in the provost who came home, and uh, he finished up underneath the table every time there was a noise. 
I don't regret a day of it. I regret it getting out while I was in the army. I don't regret one day of it, to be honest. God forbid you ever have to go through it. We don't want any more wars, thank you very much. But sadly, if there was one I was young enough, I'd be there. But I've run out of puff. 